everybody and welcome to another exciting holiday edition of the No Zone. My name is Wanja. And I'm Charlie. Now, I'm sure you've noticed we're doing things a little bit differently on this holiday edition of the No Zone. And I must admit, we're happy to have you with us. And as usual, it's nothing short of fun and laughter as we learn. That's right. Now, to start us off, why don't we go and find out what the buzzwords are and then we'll go and join the Junction Juniors as they run around Marco Tano. Library. Flag. Assembly, spelling, and writing. Labor, responsibility. Beat, try, fight. Now make sure you spot as many buzzwords as you can. Here is Junction Juniors. James, you're late again. Hmm? You missed assembly, and your first lesson has already begun. Would you like to explain yourself? I'm sorry, teacher. I was helping. It is not me. I don't want to listen to your excuses. This is the third time you've been late this week, and you're always making up stories. Hmm? Tell me, how are we supposed to believe anything you say? You have to be punished for your lateness. So you stay in class during break time, and you arrange the class library. Teacher, I have to work on my talent show, peace with the rest of my group. Hey, 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 hey. You need to learn a lesson and sacrifice your time. Go! Barakwell plays guitar like last year. Bakari will really miss out. Oh yeah, I'm going to sing. I'm just going to be like red. What about you, Leleti? Are you excited about the play? I don't think so. I just think it's a waste of time dancing around on the stage. Really, huh? Eh, Briar, what are you wearing? This is my costume for the class play. I'm going to be a cowboy. It's better than wearing school uniforms. the best role in the whole of the play. You get to be the hero. Every hero needs a partner. Teacher Pendo said we should learn to work together. But how can we work together if James isn't here? Don't worry, you can practice at lunchtime instead. That way the play will be perfect for the show in the evening. I don't think so. I still think our lessons are much more important. What? Leliti, we have Plenty of time to think about our spellings and grades. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's have some fun. I'm not sure about my math. I never know how to calculate the sizes of areas. Areas are easy. Look at a rectangle. You just multiply the length times the width. So a rectangle that is 3 centimeters by 4 centimeters is an area of 12 centimeters square. Hey, Lele, do you see? You know areas, so you have no excuse not to rehearse at lunchtime. Yeah. Hey, James, wait. Teacher, I've already arranged the library books just as you asked. That was your punishment for being late. But what about your telling lies? I wasn't lying. I'm going to be late for my talent show. Schools are for lessons, not fun and game. I want you to go and copy lines from the blackboard and make sure your handwriting is neat. Let's go. Where 
this gent is always late. Ah. And when he does arrive, he'll be full of his made-up excuses. <laughs> Let's practice anyway. Yeah. I still think we should be studying. Pelletti, are you sure? This is a great thing. School isn't all about books. Yeah, and children have the right to play. This is an extra activity to make us better students, Lily. Mm. Come on, Lily. Tell us the reason why you don't want to do this. Are you scared? I just can't. You are scared. I'm not scared. I'm never scared. Uh, let's just go look for yeah, Jeff. Yeah, let's go. Go. I'll stay here. Okay. Bye. You see, James, isn't this more fun than practicing for some silly talent show? Yes, teacher. And maybe if you spend more time studying, you'll be able to get a few more ticks and less crosses. But teacher... Carry on with your work. Leleti, are you excited about today's talent show? Teacher Penda, do we have to do this show? Is it that important? I think we should be spending most of our time in class. Leleti, drama and sports are very important to students. Such activities help you develop and grow while learning about life. It's okay to be nervous. I know it can be very scary performing in front of a lot of people. When I was younger, I was shy, and I never thought I would grow up to be a teacher. But then one time I was at a school play, and it really helped boost my confidence. Really? And I'm telling you, it's going to be so much fun. And once you've practiced enough, you'll see just how easy it is. Are you going to be brave? Good. Let's go find the rest. Children, you really think I can't hear you whisper? Eh? I think you all ought to come inside and join James with his copying of lines. Sorry, Chucky Manda, we didn't mean to be rude. We are just coming to call James for our play. He's going to be my partner. Not only was James late again this morning, but he was full of his usual excuses. But I was telling the truth. Ah, James, we found you. Madam Pendle, I'm in the middle of punishing James. He organized books, and now he's copying his lines. Oh. Not only was he late again this morning, but he lied about it too. Please, teacher Kimanda, we need James. Otherwise, our play won't work. He'll just have to miss that silly talent show. But teacher Pendle, you've always said I'm important. Sports and plays are for students. And it teaches us to work together. All those activities are important, but so is discipline. I'm afraid James will have to stay behind and finish his punishment. But I was helping someone. Hello. I'm my for the talent show. And what are you doing here? I met with James earlier. He helped me and he told me to come and watch this play that he was performing. I was running school and I saw Snake. He needed my help and I helped him. I was carrying my grill to the Mabuki's party. The handle broke. So James helped me by going back to the town. He came back with the Mkokoteni driver and a rope. I'm sorry if I put you into trouble. I'm innocent. I was telling the truth. Well, Mrs. Kimanda, it seems we misjudged James and we've punished him enough for today. Now, Snake, I think you'll be too early for the talent show. Then I have to go back to my grill. Well, in that case, we just could have an early performance just for you and Mrs. Kimanda. That would be amazing. But I don't think Lelet wants to perform in the play anymore. Well, Lelet is more than ready for her performance. <laughs> So, the hero of 
was busy looking after his star when his partner approached him. So my partner, what is the matter? I mean she's in trouble. Enough of your stories. You're always making things up. The hero had grown tired of his partner telling lies and didn't believe him. I'm telling the truth. Believe me. Follow me. Luckily our hero was feeling kind and decided to follow his partner. Soon it became clear that the partner was telling the truth. Ha! You think you're better than me, hero? I can defeat you and take over the town. Don't try to stop me. I have a hostage. Please help me, please! Our hero, with the help of his partner, were able to chase away the evil bamboo. There are two of us defending this town. Now leave and never come back. Amishi was saved and the hero saved his town. But the partner learned that if you ever tell so many stories, nobody will believe even if you're telling the truth. That was great, guys. I'm sure everybody liked the talent show. Thanks again, guys, for your great performance. Junction. No, no, Babu. You have to understand. I have lost my job and your shosho here is too old to fend for our family. Right. We all have to try to get food for the family. But what about... You will have to find a way to get some extra cash to buy food. But what about school? Babu. You will have to find a way to get some extra cash to buy food. You, 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 you useless pieces of charcoal. Huh? Why can't you arrange yourselves? Huh? Do you think I have all the time in the world to keep on working on you, you purple head? You see, I would pay anything, anything just to have this sorted and taken to the market. I need to put money in my pocket, and all you're doing is sitting on yourself, you see? Ah! Do you need help? Why me? I can help you if you pay me. Um, you see, this sack contains 30 kilograms of charcoal. Mm -hmm. These tins can carry two kilograms each. In essence, what I'm saying is, you'll arrange this sack into the 15 tins. Get it? Start working. <laughs> Hey, Brian, look, the sky is totally green. Yeah, look. Where? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get started in the mission. Don't make it a hard one. So our teacher has given Brian, James, Babu, and I just one day to form a team and debate on the topic child labor. The debate is tomorrow after class. I suggest we use the name Junction Junior. Kwani, we were going to call ourselves 
Harambe style. <laughs> we are going to go against child labor and we need your help. I would like to be the secretary. The participants have to be from our class only, so I'm sorry, Bakari, you can't be secretary. But you thought teacher said we can pick someone from another class to help us on the debate. Okay, okay then Amishi Bakari and I will help in the research. Yes, I knew we could count on you. But since Babu is not here, I can work on the debating structure and Brian and James can do the debating. Yeah? What? I wonder why he did not make it to school today. Who? Huh? Babu! Well. Hey, I hope you didn't bring germs and viruses into my homestead. I think I'm done here. Are you sure? Oh, that was fast. But I know I've done it faster and better than you. It's only that you looked like you needed a job. See, you people from poor families. That will do, yeah? But you said you'll give me a hundred shillings. And who said the job is over? This is just for encouragement, huh? Babu, when you're done with this lot, then you'll get your hundred bob, right? But... But what, Babu? Do you need the money or not? Yes. Ben, get back to work. What's wrong with you? Yeah. You don't even have to pay up with this yeah. baby. Neither do I. Hey, you guys, I hear that Bob was saying going to Benson's house this morning. I hear that man is a bad man. You know, he locks children up in his house just to scare them. Hey, yeah. me, I was even told he makes children work and then they miss school. Eh? Hey. Mad. Maybe he even beats them to make them work. Oh, poor Bob. What will we do? Amishi, Brian, James, and I will go to Benson's house to check if Babu is there, okay? Then Bakari and I will go find Chief Matano. Oh. Thank God. Oh. Come on, Johnson Juniors! Yay! Hey! We had you in trouble. Before he wakes up or I lose my money. Look, we are here to help you, eh? I can't go. My father lost his job and my grandmother is too old to work. I have to do the job, otherwise my family will starve. We never thought he was paying you. We thought that he was forcing you to work. Yeah. You have to get out of here now. He's gone! Oh. <laughs> He's right behind you! <laughs> Smell rats from miles away. That's why they call me Benson the Great. <laughs> if they called you Benson the Smelly, what? Pony. Okay, now you know my true colors. Yeah? Hey. No, they won't. <laughs> Chief. Mr. Benson the Great. You of all people should know that child labor is wrong. But I didn't do anything wrong. You want to tell me this boy is all covered in charcoal because he didn't have water to bathe? How can you be so cruel to such an innocent child, messing up his schooling? It wasn't me. The boy came to me looking for a job. All I did was give him one. Now what's wrong with that, Chief? I need the job, otherwise my family will starve. You see? You see, Chief? Hey, Chief. Babu, I understand that you are trying to help out your family. But schooling is very important for you. You should not be working at this age. I... Mr. Chief, <laughs> supposing I had a child, I'm not supposed to give them any work at home? Children should definitely help out at home. Yeah. But they have a right to an education and a right to have some free time to enjoy their childhood. What? Babu, as I told you, I understand you're trying to help out at home. 
but I cannot let this fellow misuse you. But my dad lost his job and my grandmother. I'm sorry. Uh, hey, hey, chief. Hey, chief. You should be sorry. Babu, I would like to speak to your father, and I'm sure we can work out a solution to all this. As for you, Mr. Benson the Great, you are coming with me to the camp, and you get a new spelling for the word labor. Chief. Uh, yes, yes, let's go. We have a debate yeah, today. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. And lastly, there's a saying that says you reap what you sow. Children can't expect to eat if they don't work. Bottom line is that no one likes lazy people. Thank you. planted a maize seed and watered it for only a day. He then asked the seed to produce. Was it possible? Of course not. Young children all over the world are being forced to work and leave school. Is it fair? Thank you. It's true children need to relax, do their homework and play. But times have changed and the economy is different. The family has to work harder to survive, so to keep the family as a strong unit. Even children must work. After all, Kenya is a working nation. My sister and I once missed school, trying to help my mother till the farm. A good friend of mine yesterday missed school because he thought he had to work. We all trying to help our families. It's true. Children have to work. A child helping at home with light household chores is not child labor, but a child who is missing on their childhood and school is child labor, and it must be stopped. Let the maize seed grow into a plant, then ask for maize. Let us grow up and go to school for a better future. Let children be children. Presenting the debate champions of class 4B, Lele, Tibran, James, and Babu. Yay! I want to thank you all for saving me from Benson. I was too desperate but shy to ask for help. I'm sorry. But however, Chief Matano managed to get my father a job, so all will be well at home. Yeah, and I hear Benson was taught a very good lesson. Mm. Benson, so not the great. Uh, yes, he was taught a very good lesson. Mm. Mm. A good one. Come on, guys, come on. Like Benson are the ones who make the world unsafe for children. Yes, but I'm glad that things turned out well for the Junction Juniors in both those episodes. At least Benson learned his lesson, and the Junction Juniors realized that extracurricular activities in school are just as important as the school work. Yep. Now it's time for us to go and join Teacher Pendo in the Learning Zone for more revision with mathematics. It's time for Hot Numbers. Hello there and welcome back to Hot Numbers. Are you all ready for today's lesson? Yes! Great. Now today we are going to be learning about maths. But Teacher Pendo, we are always learning about maths. No, Mara, I didn't say maths. I said mass. M-A-S-S. Aha! Very mass. Good. Now, mass is the amount of matter in a substance or a body. Now, matter is what things are made of. Now, it's important to know that mass is the same wherever the body is. Now, many people confuse mass and weight. Now, the weight of a body depends on the pull of gravity. Your weight can change depending on where you are, but the mass always remains the same. Now, we usually weigh mass in kilograms, kgs. Now, we use a beam balance to measure mass. I brought one with me. Aha! Uh -huh. 
I was wondering what that was for. Now I know it's called a beam balance. Yes, it is. Now we will use this beam balance to find out which object has more mass. Is it this weight or this bag of sand? Now who would like to guess? Yes, give it. A bucket of sand. Okay, let's see whether you're right. Just hold that for me. You are right, the sand is heavier than the weight. Now what do I need to do if I want the sand to weigh the same as the weight? Oh, I know, I know, I yes, know. Yes, Marara? Remove some sand. Is he right? Yes! Okay, now let's see whether that is right. So someone use this spoon to remove some sand from the bag. Well done! Now the beam is now balanced. The weight weighs the same as the sand, so they have the same mass. They both weigh one kilogram. Now I want to divide this sand into half. Just hold that for me. Just remove that. So we are dividing it into half. Now let me remove some. Now, who can tell me the mass of these two packets of sand? Remember, at first it was one kg. So we've divided it into half. Yes, Amoy? A half kg. Yes, they both weigh half a kilogram. Now, what is a half of a half a kilogram? Oh, ooh, I know, I know. Yes, Marara? Now, you taught me if I divide a circle into two, that is a half. And if I divide it into four, then that is a quarter. If you divide the packet again, it will be a quarter of a kilogram. Well done, Marara. You're absolutely right. Now let's have some fun weighing some of these items. But before we do, I'd like you to estimate the mass of each item. Now, if you think it's more than a kilogram, you say it's greater than. If you think it's less than a kilogram, you say less than. And if you think it's the same as a kilogram, you say? Equal. Very good. Now, let's get started. Now, my first item is this bag of flour. Now you tell me, do you think it's more than a kilogram, less than a kilogram, or equals to a kilogram? Yes, Ndivi? Equal to. Aha. Uh -huh. How about this group? Yes, Marwa? Equal to a kilogram. Okay, let's see if you're right. Just hold that for me. <laughs> So I put my weight here and put this bag here. You're right. So the mass of this uh, flour is equal to one kilogram. Learning with Teacher Panda is always so much fun. That's right. But now it's time for us to take a break. But don't go anywhere because we will be right back and Maspidi will be taking us on another exciting adventure. Shake your bones. Welcome back, everyone. We're glad that you're with us. Now, let me ask you a quick question. Do you know that there are many children who are missing out on school and do not get to have a proper childhood? So let's join Maspidi as he goes all the way to Thika to revisit some of his lovely friends. 
we'll also meet a very special friend called Elvin. Come, come with me, children. This week we are visiting some very friendly people, and I'm sure you will love them. This is Thika School for the Blind. Eyes are very important parts of our body. They let us see all that is happening around us. You know, I've always wondered how the blind are able to do their stuff when they actually can't see. But we can find out that and much more. Come on, people, come with me. The headmistress tells me that Thika School for the Blind hosts over 200 children from all over the country. However, each kid here has a different story and they all need special care and attention. Even though most of the times they depend on well wishes, the school takes care of them and gives them a good environment where they get to share and learn. While most of the pupils use a guiding stick to help them walk down the corridors without falling down or hitting objects, some have mastered the path so well that they know where and when to cross. Let us clap for him. Mm, it's break time, people. Let the game start. I'm told since these children can't see clearly or nothing at all, their sense of touch and smell is very good. Sound is very important for the blind since it guides them. For instance, this ball has jiggles that make some noise as it is thrown. Isn't that impressive? Here, their favorite game is goalball, and they love it. Now that the kids can't use a pen to write or learn, during lessons, they have learned how to use Braille. The Braille is a special machine that has patterned dots that represent all the letters and numbers. One uses their fingers to punch the letters or the numbers they want on the paper to form a sentence. Another writing tool they use is slate and styler, used just like a pen and a paper. Hey, look, I'm trying. I'm trying to learn how to use one too. But it's not as easy as it looks. Have you met Wairimo yet? Wairimo wants to be a musician when she grows up. This must be very challenging. Let me help out Wairimo. It is not as easy as it looks. Maybe with a few more lessons from Wairimo, I will learn how to even write my name. I really wish Wairimo all the best. Maybe she will be one of the greatest musicians in the world. Oh, I wish I could spend more time with these kids. But because I have to go and milk my cows before it's too late, it's now time for me to say goodbye to my special friend Wairimo and of course everyone else. Bye! During playtime, we make most of our friends and we have lots of fun together. But we also have to make time to support our parents at home by helping them out with the household work. However, if the child is given too much work that affects their health, their well-being or their education, then that is bad and it is called child labor. But it is good that we have some organization that take care of children welfare. Okay. Yes. Good. So Mr. Gilbert, how does Cradle deal with child labor? The Cradle um, is a child rights advisory documentation and legal center. We mainly offer legal advice and representation to children. Whenever we get such a case, quite often we ensure that the accused person is prosecuted. Um, and, and the rights of the child are upheld by the courts of law in this country. 
But sometimes due to the poverty levels, here in Kenya, some children have to work to be able to get basic needs like food. For example, Elvin Omosi had dropped out of school because his mother was not in a position to get food for the whole family. Elvin Omosi with his brothers live in Korokocha slums. Although him and his brothers help out with the household chores, like washing and sweeping, they know very well that they have to work a little bit harder to be able to get even a single meal for the family. He would have been in school, but he knows that would mean risking a day without food. Elvin spends most of his time at the dumping sites, trying to get anything to earn him some few coins. He is evidently tired, but he knows not any other way. This is a way of a living that he has to adapt to. This is where Elvin sells his collections for the day. Some of the stuff he comes across could be dangerous because he collects this with bare hands. He is at great risk of injuring himself or even getting sick. Wow, two kilograms and some coins too. It is good to share responsibilities, but because this makes Elvin miss school, it will definitely affect his life in future too. On a good day, Elvin comes home with some little money to help feed his family. However, this denies Elvin the chance to learn and play with his friends. On the other hand, Muteti sells groundnuts to willing customers from the roadside and still makes time to go to school. Muteti is in Standard 7 in Mukuru Primary School. And with the little money he makes, he is able to buy himself school books and even food for the whole family. The streets of Nairobi, just like any other town in Kenya, have lots of children who are begging in the streets. Apart from being denied the privilege to go to school, these kids stay in the cold for the better part of the night. It is true that the poverty levels here in Kenya are pushing the children to work to get the basic needs. But it is wrong to make children work so hard, and it is our responsibility to protect the rights of the children. Every child has a right to a good life, education, shelter, and clothing. Bye, children. It's very sad for Elvin and other children going through the same. That's true. Right? Children need the chance to be children so that they can enjoy themselves and have fun. Well, it's time now to join to depend on another exciting lesson in cool words. and welcome back to another fun-packed lesson right here on Cool Words. It's always a pleasure helping you improve your English. Are you all ready to learn? Yes! Great. Now, last lesson, we learned how we use the apostrophe with nouns to show ownership or possession. We learned that when we want to show that something belongs to someone, we put an apostrophe after the name and then we add an S. For example, Marara's mane. Oh, yes, I remember. And when we have plural nouns ending with S, we add an apostrophe at the end. For example, ladies' handbags. Excellent. Now today we are going to look at another way of using the apostrophe. I promise it won't be a difficult lesson. I wonder if anyone can guess what I'm talking about. I can't think of a clue. Yes, Reja? Is it can't? You said can't instead of cannot and we use an apostrophe in the word can't. Very, very good. I can see you've been doing your homework. Now, the apostrophe in this case is used to show omission. Let me explain. Now, sometimes when we are writing some words, we shorten them by omitting. That means we leave out some letters and use the apostrophe where the letters were. Now, these words are called contractions because they have been shortened, contracted. I don't get it, Chapendo. Do you have an example? Yes, I do. And you just said one right there. You just said don't. Now, this is a short form of do not. Now, when these two words run together, we use the short form don't. Now, the letter O has been omitted, and the apostrophe appears between the N and the T. Now, can someone give me some examples? Yes, Omondi? Did not, didn't. Very good. Someone else? Yes, Njunge? We will, will. 
Aha, uh -huh, excellent. Someone else? Yes, Frederick. There is theirs. Aha, uh -huh, very good. Someone else? Yes, Marwa. It is it. Very good. Now, we use shortened forms like this a lot in conversation and when writing down what people say. However, there's some words that do not follow this rule. For example, will not becomes won't. I have becomes have. Now, it makes it easier to say them. Now, let's try contracting these phrases. Here is my first one, does not. Yes, Frederick. Doesn't. Excellent. That is. Yes, Mara. That. My next one, he would. Yes, Amwai. He'd. Aha. Uh -huh. Excellent. I am. Yes, Reja. Um. Aha. Uh -huh. Um. Should not. Yes, Somundi. Shouldn't. Super. Is not. Yes, Njunge? Isn't. Uh -huh. And the last one, they will. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Yes, Marara? They'll. Uh -huh. Very good. I can't believe just how well you've all done. Now, there are some occasions that you wouldn't want to use these contractions. You need to remember that we use these contractions in informal writing and speech. Oh, no, Teacher Pendo. Now you're confusing me. Not to worry, Marara. It's not difficult. Now, try and think of it this way. Now, how would a sign read? Um, do not walk on the grass or don't walk on the grass. Oh, I get it. Do not walk on the grass is more formal. Absolutely. Well, that's it for today's cool one. Shake your After that exciting lesson of cool words, I think it's time we put on our thinking caps. Let's see how many words we can spell as we go into the spelling zone for Spell It. Animal, Animal. Chapter. Building. building, narrow, building. respect, respect. respect. deep, vegetable, work. 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 Welcome to Spell It. Mwangi, Jatelo, and Mutanu. You're about to step out of the shadows and into the light. You will compete for the top prize of the Nozon Spelling Champion. If you win, you will go home with your very own Nozon Dictionary. Each contender has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, simply say repeat and the word will be repeated for you. Now the more words you spell correctly, the more points you have, the greater your chances of winning. Are the rules clear? Yes. Wangi, you're up first. Please, take your place on the spelling zone. Wangi, your 30 seconds start now. Draw. D-R-A-W. Tick. T-I-C-K. Games. G A M E S Notice N N O T I C E Subject S U B G E C T Spelling S P E W L I N G Uniform U U N I F O R M Assembly A A W S E M D Y Well done. Well done. Please step back. Jatelo, you're up next. Kindly take your place on the spelling zone. Jatelo, your 30 seconds start now. Flag. F-L-A-G. Study. S-T-U-D-Y. Ruler. R-U-L-E-R. -E Eraser. E -R -E -R -A E S R lesson L E double S E A double S O N whisper pass handwriting 
H-A-N-D-W-I-T-I. Well is up. Well done, Jatelo. Mutanu, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Mutanu, your 30 seconds start now. Mark. M-A-R-K. Pupil. P-U-P-I-L. Brick. B-R-E-A-K. Shelf. S-H-E-L-F. Library. L-I-B-R-A-R-Y. Present. P-R-E-S-E-N-T. Calendar. C-A-L-E-N-D-E-R. Educate. E-D-U-C-A-T-E. Schedule. S-C-H-E-D-U-L-E. Activities. A-C-T-I-V-I-T-I-E-S. Time is up. Well done. Well done. In third place, we have Jatello. Let's give him a round of applause, please. Round of applause. Well done. Now, in second place, we have Mwangi, which means our winner for today is Mutano with a total of nine points. Let's give a round of applause, everyone. Congratulations, Mutan. You are today's No Zone Spelling Champion. Show everyone your dictionary. A round of applause! Well done. Thank you. Animal. Animal. Chapter. Building. Narrow. Building. Respect. 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 Deep. Respect. Vegetable. Work. 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 Welcome to Spell It. Gatti. Andati. And Stacy. You're about to step out of the shadows and into the light. You will compete for the top prize of the Nozone Spelling Champion. If you win, you will go home with your very own Nozone Dictionary. Now, each contender has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, just say repeat, and the word will be repeated for you. Now, each word is worth one point. So the more words you spell correctly, the greater your chances of winning. Are the rules clear? Yes. Gatti, you're up first. Kindly take your place on the spelling zone. Gatti, your 30 seconds start now. Beat. B-E-A-T. Sport. S-P-O-T. Coach. C O A C H. Accept. A double C P E T. Compete. C O M P E T. Trainer. T R A I N E R. Football. F double O. Tiny. Please step back. Andati, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. And that, your 30 seconds start now. Lost. L-O-S-T. Team. T-E-A-M. Score. S-C-O-R-E. Defeat. D-E-A-F-E-T. Whistle. W-H-I-S-T-L-E. Uniform. U-L-I-F-O-R-M. Competitor. C-O-M-P-E-T-E-R. Swimming. S-W-I-M-M-E-I-N-G. Spectator. Time is up. Well done, Well done. Please step back. <laughs> Stacy, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Stacy, your 30 seconds start now. Goal. G-O-L. G O E G O A L Match M A T H M M A T C H Track T R A C K Rugby R U B B Y Basketball B A S B A S K E T B U L Referee R E R E S Please step back. 
we can now reveal the scores. In third place, we have Gatti. Let's give her a round of applause, everyone. In second place is Stacy, which means our winner is Andati. Let's give him a round of applause. Well done. Well done. Well done. Congratulations. You are today's No Zone Spelling Champion. Show everyone your dictionary. Let's give him another round of applause. Well done. Well, I hope you've also been trying to spell along because we will treat you to an exciting, wild adventure, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> but first, before we go on our adventure, why don't we relax, get rid of the tension, and enjoy an exciting African tale. Hello, everyone. I hope you're sitting comfortably. I'm going to read you a story about a lazy and very bad crocodile. I hope you won't forget to listen out to this week's buzzwords. Many, many years ago, when animals could talk and mountains could walk, all the animals worked and played happily together. The elephants washed each other with water from their trunks, the monkeys would comb each other's hair, and the birds would peck flies from the rhinos' backs. All the animals had lots of responsibilities, but they always made time to play and sing and run and jump and skip, for they were happy and they were all friends. In those days, ostrich and crocodile were the best of friends. After working and playing, they would usually walk home together. Even though they were the best of friends, their behavior was very different. Ostrich would run everywhere looking for food, but Crocodile was very lazy and always complained about having to work. Crocodile loved to complain. In fact, he liked nothing better than to lie in the sun and complain all day long. He hated responsibility and would always think of ways of getting other animals to do his work for him. One day, Crocodile was feeling particularly lazy. He couldn't even be bothered to find something to eat. And so, he decided to trick his friend Ostrich and have him for lunch. So that day, Crocodile just lay in the sand, singing quietly to himself and waited for Ostrich to come by. When Ostrich had finished working and playing with his other friends, he went to find Crocodile. As soon as Crocodile saw Ostrich coming, he started crying and begging Ostrich to help him. He wept and sobbed so loudly that Ostrich almost started to cry himself. He hated seeing his friend so upset. Ostrich leant down to get as close as possible to Crocodile, hoping to offer him some comfort. Oh, help me, help me wailed Crocodile. I have the most dreadful toothache. It hurts so much, I beg you. Look inside my mouth and see which tooth is hurting me so terribly. And Crocodile opened his mouth wide to allow Ostrich to look inside. Ostrich was so concerned for his friend, he didn't even think twice about looking inside Crocodile's mouth. He would never think that his friend might want to bite him. And so, Ostrich put his head right inside Crocodile's mouth and started looking for the tooth that was causing Crocodile so much pain. Snap! Crocodile shut his mouth with the most enormous snap, trapping Ostrich's head between his jaws. Then Crocodile started pulling Ostrich towards the river where he intended to feast on him. Now, even though Crocodile was very strong, you should also know that ostriches are also very strong. They have big, thick legs to help them run fast. And so, realizing that he had been tricked, Ostrich dug his feet into the ground and tried to pull his head out of Crocodile's mouth. As Crocodile pulled in one direction, Ostrich pulled in another. The two animals pulled with all their strength, 
Ostrich pulled and pulled until Crocodile began to feel his teeth cracking. Crocodile tried to bite even harder, but it was no use. Ostrich was too strong. All the pulling started to hurt Crocodile's teeth so much that he had to let go of Ostrich. As soon as he was free, poor Ostrich ran for his life. From that day, Ostrich has a very, very long neck and has never been friends with Crocodile ever again. After today, Crocodile still lies lazily in the sun, opening his mouth wide, waiting for a more foolish animal to have him for his lunch. The end. What a funny story. Did you hear any of the buzzwords? I bet you did. Well, that's all we had time for today. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Hello, Nose on Rangers. Today, we're going to learn about a very special animal that lives in rivers and lakes. I wonder why we have logs floating around here. Let's take a closer look. Oh, look out! Those aren't really logs, they're crocodiles. Crocodiles are very interesting animals, and today, we're going to spend some time with them and learn all we can about them. Wow, look at that. Crocodiles have very large mouths, don't they? Crocodiles are cold-blooded animals, which means that their body temperature is affected by their surroundings. In the morning when it is cool, crocodiles have to heat up by basking in the sun. In the afternoons when it is too hot, crocodiles like resting like this with their mouths wide open to cool off. Crocodiles have tough scaly skin, powerful legs and sharp claws. They have powerful tails which they use to move their heavy bodies quietly and swiftly through water. Can you see where their nostrils are? Right there at the end of their snout. This allows them to breathe while the rest of their bodies are underwater. Crocodiles are very special creatures. They have a secondary eyelid that is thin and translucent. When they swim underwater, this lid protects their eyes and allows them to keep seeing. It is just like swimming goggles, crocodile style. Crocodiles are very clever hunters. They can sit very still in shallow water and look like floating logs until an animal comes really close. Even a very large crocodile can swim underwater without making the slightest noise. It then strikes at an amazing speed and captures its prey. If the animal is small, the crocodile swallows it whole. If it's too big, the crocodile rolls and twists to tear it to pieces. Look at that. I wonder what toothpaste they use. Crocodiles don't have to eat all the time like us. They can live for months without feeding as they store energy in the form of fat. When a crocodile lays eggs, it digs a hole in the ground using its hind feet. It lays about 50 eggs inside the nest. After 65 to 100 days, the little baby crocodiles break out of the eggs. If the weather was very cold or very hot, the baby crocodiles will be girls. But if it was just warm, they will be boys. Baby crocodiles are very small, about the size of your normal drawing ruler, but they will grow into deadly predators. Crocodiles are very dangerous to humans. They are responsible for killing hundreds of people each year. So next time you see a log floating in the water, it may be clever to stay away, don't you think? See you next time. Bye! Sadly, we have come to the end of this exciting holiday edition of the No Zone. But don't worry, we'll be back next Saturday for more fun and learning right here on the No Zone. Until then, bye! bye.